Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 20th episode of Incoherent Ramblings. Ramble 0 to 0. We made it 20! Hey, that was like the next one we'll be able to drink. <laughs> like it. Paul gave us a uh, countdown. Ah, we'll sandwich. be... A- more than legal, we'll be drinking age. <laughs> That's right. Drinking age. Hey. And today, Go to federal prison. To, and today our subject <laughs> is public education. My choice from last week. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce oh, myself. No, I'm, I thought it was public enemy. Crap. Number one. Oh, all my, no, all my we're research not be for nothing. <laughs> Damn it. You listen your, your to all that pounding wrong. Your, your research is Rap. usually for nothing. I just watched VHS C for a little bit. VH1, where are they now? <laughs> Damn it. Did I just say VHS? I watched VHS C. I had it on a three minute tape. Yes. I meant to say VH1C. Wow. So, oh I'm your host, Joey Shamel. Joining you tonight with me will be. Kale Anderson. Daryl Shores. Ralphie the Lander. <laughs> and the guy There's no that. delay, Paul. Paul Huttinger. <laughs> who is uh, getting over a cold. <laughs> so he is coming to us as this this week's foreign correspondent live from Temple City, California, only about three miles away. Yes. Uh, and uh, today we're talking about public education and you. Our sponsors today from the Marvel Universe are two educated X-Men from the X-Men class. We have... Why am I showing Paul? No, we're not recording this. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me show you. Uh, we have Angel. And Angel we ha- probably went to private school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, we have, uh, and we have Colossus. And he was in the Russian education system. Yeah, the gulag. Get to the chopper! <laughs> Oh, wait, that's right. <laughs> That's Austrian. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, to, start, to start today off, we're going to begin with a little... Oh, by the way, if you want to email us, please uh, send us a email. Please. <laughs> please. Blackhole.com. <laughs> Uh, we've only gotten one from Paul's wife, and that's sad. Uh, so, uh, please send us an email at... Uh, you can... Oh, show at... I am rambling. Don't get us. Don't get us wrong. There's nothing wrong with getting an email from Paul's wife. It's just you know, friends and family. It would be nice if we. That's only counts half. Yeah, that's a half account. Yeah, it's like a gimme. Kind of like your wife's a gimme. (laughs) But we already decided that she she got the swamp ass pants, but she had to wear Paul's. That's what we decided. So she does, it, she does anyway. So <laughs> to, I'm not, we're not going to go into that. Today's free ramble is uh, for this week is going to be uh, we have to decide wrestling move or just gay. Paul, go ahead, give us a wrestling move, or we'll decide if it's gay. All right, all right. Let's go. Let's just start off with the pile driver. Okay, explain usually, that. Usually, it's usually it's your you hold your opponent, uh, you flip them around upside down. To where their uh, back I'm is already to your belly. You're already gay. I'm already gay. Back. No, I'm not. <laughs> this is, wait, this is how we're doing this. He describes the move, then we say. Yeah, we say what, whether what it's a gay move. move. I, the only thing is, like, I think of pile driver. If like the best defense <laughs> against it is called the mine shaft or something like that, then you probably it's probably kind of gay. You know? <laughs> okay, pile driver. I say gay. Uh, yeah. All right. Yes. Oh, you know, but he needs to describe it too. Okay, so. describe it. All right. Okay, so usually it's um, <laughs> back to belly, upside down. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. These are the all, the, all sound gay. Back your, <laughs> the back of your head is in the in the person's crotch, and then you slam their head to the ground and then lay them on the ground in front of you. All right, I got I, I got the call on this one. Okay, right. I got the right. visual, and that's pile driver me. potentially gay, but a reverse pile driver if your head's facing the opposite direction, very gay. All right, Kale, what do you all say? Right. Gay. I go gay. Okay, go, next one, Paul. We'll do three. All right, we'll just do the the Boston Crab. Okay, it's usually. <laughs> wow. Okay, you uh, you lay <laughs> you lay your opponent uh, on their on the mat, laying flat with their face down, so laying on their stomach. You get over their legs with your back to their head, and pull their legs up over your uh, underneath your arms and. Basically, is it, arch their, is this arch the their back Sutra? reverse. <laughs> you know what? I'll go ahead. What the hell? 
I, if, <clears throat> except for the name, I'll go ahead and go wrestling move. You know, you know what? If that were done with a woman, it would be kind of hetero. <laughs> well, why do these wrestling moves have to be gay? We're presuming two <laughs> male wrestlers, right? So it it could be two curl. It could be gay or hot. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the pre ramble. All right, I say I say right. this one's a good wrestling move. What do you guys? This is a wrestling move. What do you say? I'm sorry, I was distracted. Just look, anything, okay. anything that can give you crabs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I, I changed my vote to gay. All right, uh, let's okay. let's last one. Let's take the Boston crab and 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 change it up a little bit. This one's called the rocking horse. <laughs> now it's the bo- it's the Boston crab, so you have them in that reverse little little uh, arch in their back, um, and then you rock them back and forth, putting additional like pressure on the back. So you hold them up and then you move like you move back. Wow! And then you become a Cylon. You know? Yeah. Isn't that yeah, called no, cu- Isn't that called cuddling? Yeah. I go gay. <laughs> gay. Okay, gay. Okay, we have two gays. One. Well, most. <laughs> two gays. <laughs> two gays and then two gays in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say? I have no you? idea. I was thinking that. Was All right. Two fine. gays, one not. I'm gay. surprised right. how often my my thought gets blown out of my head every time people start people talking. Give, give, you, give you you give someone a blowjob. <laughs> That would blow it out too. <laughs> Every time you give Superman a blowjob, my thoughts get blown out of my head. Oh boy! <laughs> you did put explicit Ooh, on the wow. podcast, right? Okay, let's move on to today's topic: education, because that's just there's just no there's just no segue to that <laughs> from Superman and blowjob. Okay, Wait, so waiting for Superman, <laughs> to, waiting for Guffman, yeah. waiting, waiting for Superman to ejaculate. Uh, waiting for Superman was, of course, what we were supposed to watch, and I completely forgot. Oh well. All right. It was a documentary. Me too. I did. But okay, I so watched forgot. the preview. Trailer. <laughs> <And, laughs> <Trailer-man. as> we <laughs> well expect you to. Well, I had seen it before, so I read a synopsis of it to catch up. All right, uh, let's go. Let's start off with education and you. Let's talk about our uh, experiences in public or not, if we were in private. Uh, education. Uh, who wants to start off with that? Always looks like this. Okay, I'll go yeah. ahead. And start. I'll start. I-, I was educated with two of these guys. We went to school together, so our experiences will probably be similar. Temple City High School. Temple. Wait, well, I'm going backwards. Uh, <laughs> we'll just say uh, Temple City Unified School District, which was a public school. And uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, it all went pretty well for me. What do you guys say? Well, yeah. um, it's a high, I, I can speak. It's a highly rated <laughs> school for you know the California and the U.S. overall. But um, you know, public education is still public education. <laughs> it yeah, is so. indeed. Uh, and uh, I mean, we went to Longden Elementary School and then uh, Oak Avenue Middle School. Junior high. I do have to say that some of the um, AP classes were, you know, they were good for preparing for college, I think. Oh, I made the biggest mistake taking an AP class. Yeah. Girl I liked was in the AP calculus, or not, uh, AP economics. Oh, my God. I went to that class just because she was in it. I knew freaking nothing. They're talking about, you guys are learning how to balance your checkbook and regular economics. Yeah. And I'm learning about, like, yeah. the long yeah. term and short term of business plans and all that. I was like, what the hell? You're learning about how to invest in derivatives. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. So, okay, what about what's your uh, uh, experience? In education? Well, I went to Arlington Elementary School in Murray, Utah, which is no longer there. It's now the City Hall, but uh, same building. <laughs> That's Which, weird. Sounds, oh, that's telling, isn't it? <laughs> why does Arlington make me think something about World War II? There's a like because the Arlington Cemetery oh, in yeah, Washington yeah. D.C. Why? Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that would be it. Sense. And uh, I don't know. It was an okay education. Um, I don't know. It wasn't anything. They weren't considered bad or good. But, but uh, we all kind of got out of there speaking and reading and doing mm-hmm. a little math. So I guess we did okay, and well, uh, then I went to the basics were all covered. Was it uh, Hillcrest Hillcrest Junior High, where uh, my seventh grade teacher was so bad that it turned me off from math. Turned you mm. off, and uh, so I stopped doing math at that point in no, time. Math no longer turns. That's when off. you took up wrestling. That's it, wrestling, <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> 
Because Vaseline. Vaseline is done with girls. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, you're not a professional. Wrestler. I believe. No. Uh, Just for those who don't know. I'm hoping I don't get this wrong when she listens. But to this you've program. gotten paid, you're a professional. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my wife, I believe, went to private school for elementary school and then moved over to public school. I think that worked pretty well for her. Hmm. Uh, now, what about uh, what about adult experience with education? I'll go with this first because I'm a teacher. I teach in the Los Angeles Unified School District, which is kind of why I chose this because there's been a lot of crap going on, especially with my school, which I may talk about later if you're lucky. And so I have had for the last 12 years a very personal, first-hand look at public school education, and it's ups and downs. What about, what about you guys? Because, Daryl, you're you're teaching now, but it's, is it, you're well, doing public really school. Well, no, no, I, I was teaching adult school. But isn't that... Well, is, I mean, yeah, it's... Uh, it's public, though. Yeah, it, it's part of El Monte School District. Um, and, you know, adult school is just a little different from... It's, it's kind of like a, a repeat of, like, high school-level classes for people who messed it up in high school, <laughs> more or less. So... It's not quite co- college level, so. Gotcha. Yeah, and what every about time now with adult school, do they have to? Well, do they have to pay to go there, Daryl? It used to be uh, free, but then they started doing some. Uh, I'm sorry. Every time you say adult school, I keep thinking this is for porno stars. <laughs> no, no, no. And I, when he said, "Do they pay?" and I thought, "Well, of course they pay." Yeah. Well, I took cock one hundred and one. <laughs> so what I was, I don't know. I'm I'm blanking on uh, terminology here, but there there is a Did fee it get now. Blown out of your mind. So, okay, so they have an incentive. I mean, they're they're out cash right, if they right, don't. Right. Go to school and, and I don't want to, I don't want to paint it as if. You know, like there, there is a GED section there, but the rest of it is vocational. So it's a it's a lot of specialty you stuff. You know, just how to do certain types of vocations and, and jobs and things. And then there there's also the nursing RN program is really big over there. So it, you know, I'm I'm I was being a little flipped by saying it's kind of like high school level because it's really not. You guys <laughs> hear that little that. sound in the background there? Yeah, I think he's got venom breathing or bane breathing in the back. <laughs> what? Oh, there's a little bit of noise coming from here. Don't worry about it. It's yeah. fine. Uh, what about Kale? Fun. What about you? Your experience, <laughs> dude. Uh, hey, Kale. What about your experience with public school as an adult? Well, public education. My wife teaches third grade in the public educa- uh, public sector, uh, public education sector. So I've been to her class several times and uh, I'm just amazed at uh, how parents have abrogated their responsibility to teach their children anything. Okay, but I think what's most important is that you define the word abrogated because it sounds like abracadabra, yeah, but dude. not quite. <laughs> they have dude, said, you just blew I do not have it. I don't have any responsibility whatsoever for something. Abrogated. Mm-hmm. Very good. Hmm. That's very good because we're going to get into that later. It reminds me of abrogado. Well, let's let's bring that in. Why don't you tell us more about your opinion on public education today? Today, well, I think it's so far we're we're teaching, you know, 18th century uh, methods of how to teach people. And so I think we're way behind on our on what we should be doing. Darryl, I'm sure Darryl, we'll what, talk more what, about what, that. What should we be doing? Well, uh, we should be uh, putting in a lot more. Uh, I guess self regulate that's not re- not regulated self paced education and uh, and doing that with programs with through the computer hmm. definitely because that's that's where it's going and as uh, the robotic uh, entities are going to get smarter you know approaching the singularity they're going to do more of the teaching and free the teachers up to basically be the tutors around the classroom. Go wherever they're needed, you know, to help kids. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, that, not not all the students way. have. Because I, I, I knew we were going to talk about this stuff. Yeah. What was that, Paul? I said not all students have computers at home. So you, if you teach them, you know, high tech <laughs> stuff that. 
Oh my <laughs> god, that was weird. <laughs> did it get your did it sign on? No, your your voice is off from your from your picture. So when you were doing that little oh. scary stare thing, you were talking. It was very It was like we get <laughs> two pauses with speech and then That's speech great. without any movement. Okay, well, nobody <laughs> home knows. We're gonna move on because nobody home knows what we're talking about. So uh, yeah. Go, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so uh, Paul, you want to say what you think it's about very visual education? Today, public. What are we on on education today? I no, think no. What do you? Uh, what's your opinion on public education in the today time? In the today time. The time I think of today. That the time of today, as of right now. <laughs> right now. Public education has its place. Oh yeah. That's very political. I know. That, that the, was the very public, vague. And very vague. And yes. it was so profound. We profoundly didn't even, well, vague. My wife t teaches in LA Unified, and my friend Joey, of course, teaches LA Unified, and Linda teaches in you know, Whittier, Park, South and Whittier. A lot of teachers. And the, <laughs> what I feel is that is the problem with there is a problem with public education, and it's just the system. It's the system itself. It's not letting teachers be teachers. They're not allowing them to educate. They're just having them regurgitate information hmm. for these tests that they have to they have to do. What do you say, Daryl? to the test. Uh, in its current state, I, I just kind of feel like education is past due being modernized a little bit because one of the things I think about with uh, kids today is you have to prepare them for a world that no one knows what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. World War Z. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, then we'd better have more classes about how to, you know... <laughs> Grow your own food and shoot <laughs> zombies in and the how head. How to throw an axe straight <laughs> for the yeah. forehead? How to throw an axe? That'd be good. <laughs> Wait, how, to, <laughs> how to do um, first aid with that uh, would be a good one. Yeah, with uh, cabbage leaves. Oh. And I wonder <laughs> if Canada and Australia it's called World War Z. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doesn't sound yeah, as good yeah. though because right. it doesn't rhyme with three. Hmm. You know, yeah. one thing with public hey, is education is we don't teach or practical education yeah. anymore. <laughs> practical? Like, you know, like electronics or, you know, they're cutting wood shop and... and right. uh, Ooh, it was good, cutting uh, wood shop. Auto shop well, and done. stuff. The electives are <laughs> yeah. going away. And they're... Well, you know, fact, so... That's kind of one of the things that... Okay, you, you, you first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. You know, like I I felt like in when we were in high school that it was the counselors and stuff really focused um on the students that were going to maybe Harvard or the big schools and stuff, but the normal kids who were going to like Cal State or or community college and stuff, it's just kind of like they just kind of pass them along and just like, "Okay, you'll you pass all these requirements, just move on and then good luck." Um and then on the other and there's the students that who weren't going to college? Where what are they getting out of high school when when they get out? Uh, if they had the auto shop going, maybe they can be more of a mechanic. Or if they have the home ec, then it's like cooking or, or anything. So it's just it, it's almost like those classes are thrown into the adult adult high school, where if you don't want to, you don't learn that as in high school. But if you're going to do that later, then you can go to a vocational school or just go learn that later. So, they're, but they're kind of thrown away to the wayside. So I wish those programs were still in most of the schools. Yeah, and well, I, I completely agree with that. In fact, I almost think that electives should start earlier uh, in education because that's not around until you're in high school, typically. And um, I guess you get some of it in junior high. But, you know, we we definitely have to get kids understanding reading, writing, and arithmetic. Don't get me wrong. But I think that you can start giving them options about feeling out the things that interest them. And that's part of the value of a great education is having an interested pupil who wants to learn the subject. So you're, yeah. you, you know, you lose a lot of that when you force them to day to day, just keep learning all the stuff that might not light their fire, you know? And I yeah. think that leaves some students behind. I think that that's why we should, uh, that up through two years or community college, a two-year degree should be mandatory, just like up through high school is now. Because of our, t our modern society, they're not getting enough to actually enter our society and, and be, you know, be beneficial members of it without two more years of college. There's yeah. a kind of um, educational inflation going on now where the job that used to require a master's now requires a doctorate, et cetera. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. Hey, Joey, what do you think about public education? Well, let me tell you. Because, you know, I have thoughts, too, on public education. Can I talk? 
No. Yeah. <laughs> there is so much silence here. I think you better. <laughs> yeah, that's my job. Uh, my opinion, just real quick, on public education is I kind of agree with you guys, but uh, I think as an elementary school teacher, I, I understand, like Daryl was saying, the importance of reading and writing and arithmetic and how hard it is to teach anything else until you get past that. And it's hard for me to get past that because the the area I teach and because I'm currently teaching special ed, I don't get past that with my kids, which makes it very difficult to teach anything else. But once you get past the basics and people can read and write and can do basic math, then you get to the point where, well, is the education system today um, adequate, especially, and not just in public education, but in private education? Because if you think about public education, it is a relatively new idea where everybody gets taught. You know, if you look, if you go back even just a hundred years, the, the idea of everybody going to school is is a relatively new idea. And so, the, being able to teach everyone, I don't think we figured it out yet. I think it's almost like a new science. It's just we don't look at it that way. Well, it's it's an industrial age product, as you said. Ah, very good. Yeah, it seems kind of like it's designed like a factory. You know, you have uneducated students at the beginning and you put them through the assembly line you're supposed to have educated students on the output and it's i think we have to lose the kind of factory floor design of education how it seems to be this assembly line of give them this give them that give them the other and they're all going to come out homogenous on the other end well they were all heading for the factory and that was what the education system was set up for is that everybody had to be at a certain level to go work in a factory and that's what they were taught to yeah, now it's actually comes to the point where education is really to become a well-rounded adult individual that can make it in society, not just in a factory or in a job. And I think that's kind of where things are changing now. I mean, we're all going to have a job someday or something to that effect if when we grow up. But I don't think the the classic notions of what a job are are the same anymore. And so it's not such a... Uh, uh, uniform machine, uh, you know, we're not just making one part anymore, if you want to look at it that way. We've, we've got to have more flexibility in the education system. Well, the inter- hard part, too, is you're, have, you're trying to bit. teach to a broad spectrum of students. You have the really bright and the really dumb, and, you yep. know, you got to get somewhere in the middle, and that's where you're going to have to teach, because you don't know every year, you know, that your students is just the neighborhood. So, well, I'll tell reflect- you, I'll tell you the biggest the biggest problem uh, from from a Cylon's point of view. From the Cylon's point of view, the biggest problem from from for that education, as I see it, from what you were saying, Paul, is you got two things. You've got age level and instructional level. And while in the in the best case scenario, they are hopefully in the same place. The truth is, they're not. But the problem yeah. is that school is a social environment, and it's hard to put kids of different a- social ages together in the same place. So right. you end up with a fifth grader who can't read. You can't put him in a first grade class with a whole bunch of kids that can't read. And there's not enough fifth graders that can't read to make a whole class out of it. So it's one of those things like, what do you do? And at this point right now, the logic is, well, it's better that we work with them individually but keep them at their age level. The question is maybe it's better not to have them at their age level because even though school is a social environment, that's not the main reason it's there. True. Well, Kale true. Yeah, but touched upon something that would be relevant to that about how you said individualized right. uh, curriculum and kind of self-leading yeah. in a way. Self-paced. And self-paced. we're going to get to that and, with and the, the future of education. the internet's going to have a lot to do with that because yeah. I think that we are going to move yeah. more and more. Yes, we are. Like, the institutions that, that are out there are putting their curriculum <laughs> online yes. already. Right. Yeah. Yes. Be- Did you just say Penis. He said yes. I said yes. <laughs> no, he was. You just yes. hear what you want to hear, Joey. <laughs> all right, Joey. <laughs> all right, you all became Darth Vader when you did that. that. Was pretty cool. All right, so well, let's move on to because we're gonna hit up on that stuff later about how things change. Let's talk about education today instead of tomorrow. Uh, what are the uh, positives of public education? I'll start with that. Uh, first of all, everybody gets school, which is great. It's the like I said, relatively new and a great thing for everybody to get public education. Uh, the other things that are good about public education is that, um, you know, it's owned by the people, so parents do have a lot of say in what's going on and have a lot of involvement if they choose Parent to. Parent groups. Pair group, well, we'll get to that uh, <laughs> in a little while and why that's not always a good thing. Uh, and also because I think it also gives uh, children a social environment. 
Family says, you have 10 missing family relationships. Boy, Joey, know. you have not yet specified your relationship with family <laughs> Do you have dragon and on this thing? <laughs> Hello, is that what's going on? Sorry! <laughs> Sorry! Hello. I don't know how to turn that off. I hope I don't get another email. <laughs> Hello, Joey. <laughs> Um, that was good. It's one was of that, my apps on, that, on was Google Chrome. No, it I wasn't. think that was self-paced <laughs> education there. Uh, that was, uh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> so the next one that comes up is going to be Joey. This is Walgreens. The test for your ball herpes have come back. <laughs> your ball herpes are okay. The next one will be like Joey. Would you like a bigger cock? Yeah, wow. Wow. All in right. your mouth. <laughs> Does that even need to be asked? <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, <laughs> so the positives, the positives of pubic education. I think he missed what I said, I mean, which, was, which was hilarious. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> so what are the negatives of public education? Oh, well, I got a positive. Oh, go positive. Oh, I just took over there. You guys, positives, public education, go. Yeah. Uh, it's, right. Well... Except it comes out of your your uh, homeowner's tax and all, whatever and all that, but it is free to the public. Yeah. So, um, oh, good, good I know, point. I know, like for me, Logan and Connor will be going to public schools because uh, I don't think we will afford a yeah. high price private school. True, mm -hmm. true. But you choose the there. You obviously will choose. We live in Temple City now, so you know they can go where, where he's going. Where we're going to go, which is a good school. He yeah. won't be going to work with Heather. Hell no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not that. <laughs> this was completely. normally. <laughs> that makes tons of sense, Paul. Good job. It does. He, he, talk, he stopped talking 30 seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, um, yes. Yeah, so. The positives. Okay. Yeah, the positives. The positives right. of education uh -huh. is is you get your kids out of your hair for about five for hours a day. <laughs> yeah, for public yeah, education. Right. Well. Kind of like what Paul said, it's, That's true. We it's available to everybody, so it's um, it's an equalizer. Now, here's my backhanded compliment to it: is that it's an equalizer that favors the lowest common denominator. Like you said, like there are a range of abilities mm -hmm. and students, and it seems like they tend to make sure everyone can stay uh, on task, and that might mean bringing down some of the kids that are uh, yeah that's an excellent going, point i mean it, faster than the others i have to teach multiple grade levels because i am a special ed teacher and uh, some some schools have to teach second through six i am luckily uh, as it stands you know this last year was three third fourth and fifth but the main thing i try to do is get at least one group at about the same level and that means i have to not help as many people that are higher level and I have to help the people that are lower go up to that level so that I can get them to a point where I can teach them all in a group. And that's, that's an extended version of how you would see it in a classroom, though. But even a general ed classroom is going to have that problem where you got the high and the low, and how do you teach them all? Give them what they need. Right. Good. Well, something I struggled with uh, a lot in adult school is that I just had to use a lot of judgment calls to decide how I should pace the class because I could tell when it was going a certain pace that I found reasonable there were just certain groups of students that didn't quite get it yet there were other ones that seemed like they were kind of tapping their feet like okay come on let's pick up the pace I get this let's move forward and I, I did my best constantly to just make it so that it was accessible and I just had to figure that at least this is an advantage of adult school is that if someone doesn't get it the first time through, they can retake the class. You don't have that same option necessarily when you're doing um, primary education because when someone repeats, that's just a big mark of failure that they uh, you know, didn't progress to the next And grade. it doesn't happen very often. Why is it right? that but they then, don't separate the subjects uh, for everything so that you don't you have like maybe a homeroom teacher but more like farther up in education why don't they do that in elementary school we actually have tried it before and in the upper grades it works a little bit but the main problem is cuz in uh, in lower grades through third grade you're basically teaching reading and so what you're doing is as you're teaching reading you're bringing in other things and you're teaching basic math hmm. and that's really all you're doing the whole time you want to bring in social studies and science and you do but it's all kind of in the guise of they need to get this reading part once 
the whole thing is with the change from third grade to fourth grade is up until third grade you're learning to read and then fourth grade and on you're supposed to be reading to learn that's what is the the, the, the demarcation that hopefully mm. happens and so that's why you will hear fourth and fifth grade and sixth grade classes like we did when we were in in uh in elementary schools, we did split up. They had reading groups at the same level and mm-hmm. math groups at the same level, and that's why they do it. I think it, later on too, that helps a lot. But uh, yeah, in the, the the younger classes, it's that's diff- more difficult. It's also it takes a bit of responsibility of your own education to go from one class to another to another, and and uh, having multiple teachers, you need to be more responsible for your own education because one teacher has so many kids, and they it's harder for them to focus on just one or two or just 30 kids or whatever and and the the class sizes have a lot to do with those too you know like you get too many students then you can't give them the individual things that they need i think that's unfair to everybody um especially you know underprivileged or uh, kids with disabilities it's like they're the ones that need the most help and the system is more and more getting designed so that they there's just not enough teacher time to give them the help that they need yeah, we, um, you know, one way you can, we, we had a guy speak the other day, and this is one, he was mostly pretty boring, but this is one of the things he said that was pretty good, was he said that he was trying to push the idea that you want to do really high level stuff. You don't want to dumb it down for kids just so they'll feel successful, which yeah. is something that as a special ed teacher, I have to do a lot. And I don't want to say dumb it down, but bring the level down because they are not at a level where they can do what needs to be done. But his idea, which kind of makes sense for general ed, I think, which is you teach at the level they're supposed to be at, no matter what level they're at, and their grade level from where they are up to the level you're teaching, everything in between is an opportunity for them to learn. And as a teacher, and they found out with studies, the main difference in there is the teacher. The teacher is the one who determines if that opportunity happens. If the mm. teachers in there are going, oh my God, these kids are so low, I can never teach them, I don't know what to do, just, do. they get frustrated, and the teacher gets frustrated. When that's the case, uh, there's no teaching going on, there's no learning. But right. if the teacher is there teaching and learning, and they're asking questions, and, they're, and he's trying, and he's, they're not, he's not getting frustrated, uh, or she, then that usually is supposed to show that there is learning going on that's where they made the best the best gains yeah i i noticed that linda has many all the time that in the third grade level Mm -hmm. that they definitely at the beginning of the year they look at the test results and then they break up the kids into uh math at least different math classes so one teacher is teaching the high the other is teaching the low like that Mm mm-hmm and that's and that's a good way to do it. And but then you get to the whole thing that's called it's called heterogeneal and homogeneal mixing of kids, which basically means yeah, yeah he's laughing. Uh, no, basically means you want to have kids that are all on the same level so that they can all you can give them one thing to learn from that's homogeneous. But if you do heterogeneous, it's because you want a high level and low level and all in between so they can work together. So each yeah. group actually has a variety of levels in it. So it all depends on the activity you're doing. And it's kind of like one of the things why I think um, classes that are electives like our art and film class that we had in high school are really important because it's that kind of class. Like er, there were a lot of different performing students in our um, in our class in regards to that. But the thing is we all came together and worked on group projects. And it seemed like by and yep. large – there weren't a lot of slackers necessarily. It was just like we were all involved in the project and we were basically figuring out where we all fit to make something happen. And that is really the basic of, of any sort of education. If you can get students to be responsible for yeah. what they're learning and you become less of the teacher but more of the uh, – Coordinator, coordinator, kind of, or guidance, or a, or a producer, yeah, yeah so, exactly. mentor. Yeah, that's it's, how I that's how I handled my uh, class. It was kind of based on how Corky handled our art film class. But when Corky. I was doing a film Missed class up. for, um, oh, first name now. Yeah, <laughs> 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 we, were doing, we were when I was doing my adult school film class. Um, I wanted it to be project based. You know, it's like yeah. we go into the class. We're going to work as a group um, on projects and. That means we had to organize ourselves as a production crew. Um, we had to brainstorm to get our ideas for writing. Now, writing turned into an individual exercise where um, I had individuals write a screen screenplay based on what our consensus was as a group about what our project would be. 
and then it came down to that way it wasn't too many chefs making you know messing up the broth right you just have like individuals writing but i would select a few favorites and have them uh propose their screenplay to the class the class would vote on the favorite and that's the one that we'd move into production with and then production was a completely entire class group project yeah that that's self-organized a bit and then when it goes to editing, since everyone had their own editing workstation and went back to an individual effort, we had the footage from our project, and then each individual could edit their version of it. Oh, that's it. That's so hmm. it. Kind of, I thought it was it was nice to be able to set up a structure like that where it was a real group activity, and you know I had gone to some seminars and things also where that kind of educational approach was. Um, you know, recommended and hmm. it seemed like it worked pretty well, well in practice. And even with young kids, if you can get them involved in something where they have to take responsibility mm-hmm. and they get to get they, and they get into it, they get involved and engaged. That's right. so important, right. and that's not something you can get from lectures. And honestly, even the guy that was talking the other day, we get personal de- uh, or professional developments from so many people teaching us how to teach kids, and they never. T- talk to us the way they're supposed to teach the kids. We get bored. We're sitting there going, uh, they're just talking to us. It's like... You're being lectured to. Yeah, too. exactly, which doesn't work. You've got to engage all sorts I of had things to, and get them and get them learning by doing stuff. I had to laugh at this one thing I, I had to go to because they talked about IPAT, which is um, a method of teaching where it's introduction, um, presentation, activity, and testing, right? Okay. So they gave us this this idea about that's you know a teaching model, right? But all they did is they introduced it and they presented and they never gave us an activity or tested <laughs> us on it, right? So <laughs> to I, try I was it just out. thinking I was just thinking about like that's pretty funny that they didn't employ iPad to give the iPad <laughs> Yeah. You could have just read it yourself. <laughs> right. Well, let's talk about some ways we could improve public. Ed- oh, unless anyone's got more any other negative things about public. Ed- I have. I yeah, had another a positive. Way. Oh, go ahead. I forgot. To another positive thing about public education, and this will, this is, geared towards Joey and all the teachers out there, is that um, you because they get federal funds and then funds and all that. There's strict. There's more strict certifications that you have to be to be a public educator than in a private uh, sector. You know, you go to a private school and to be a to be a teacher, you can go in there with just a BA. You know, yeah. whereas you go into in a public, you need to have your BA, your credential, credential in this, a California that, and whatever. So yeah, it's it's a bitch. There is. I just got to give props to the, the uh, teachers that that work harder to get their certificates. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, went totally, went totally, you Cylon you went Cylon. You went Cylon, but it was cool. You were like, "Did I?" You got to give prom. No, and I think that's that's a good that's a good point too because yeah, you're exactly right. I it takes a lot to get your credentials and everything. And you know what kind of sucks though? We laugh about this as teachers. I didn't really learn that much getting my credential though. You don't. I did not no. learn much of what I use. I did not get from learning my credential. It's from teaching in Watts and going through hell yeah. the first few years, and then you get it. Well, that was my experience, and I wasn't. I think sure. that's anything. I wasn't sure if it was unique to adult school or not, but that's it. Like when I went through the initial training yeah. and like the testing and everything, and I got my credential, and I'm like, they never actually told me how to conduct a, a class. class exactly, you know? and that's the thing. And then you figure it out after, you, like you know, I, I probably sucked at it the first I think, year I did it. I think but that's then a, I got better. I think that's you know? a huge problem with <laughs> public education and teaching is that the credential process and the teaching process is really great in the theory of education. Yeah. But it's theory of education, and until you know how to teach, theory of education is just crap. And it doesn't do you any good. You need to know how to how to handle a class, how to take care of behavior, how to deal with, how to present your material, how to keep kids engaged. And then you might get one or two classes on that, but for the most part, it's no. Yeah, they don't they don't give you a lot of practical know how. No, they, they do you, not. They give you some kind of. Uh, it seems like. Uh, nondescript theory about yeah. how things happen. But and it, it doesn't help very much. I yeah. was not prepared at all when I went. That's why uh, where the apprentice process probably is, that's why they used to teach. Mm. That is how you learned how to do anything was right. through the apprentice process. Maybe yeah. that would be good. Like you have to be a TA for mm-hmm. your training. That would yeah. be actually pretty good. They, they, they didn't have any teachers when I started. They just threw me into a classroom. I had no teaching experience. That was... Yeah. Did you what did you have did you have to do uh, student teaching? Nope. 
Well, I did. I here's the funny thing. I was you have to do student teaching before you get your credential. I had already been teaching like yeah. five years by the time I got to that point. So it was just oh. like what actually happened was I just sent in a videotape to because to the person who was supposed to watch me do student teaching, and I used my actual teaching as my student uh, teaching. Nice. Because when I went in my first time as a teacher, I had never, ever taught and had no training on it. I basically took the CBEST, which is an easy test. If you want a sub, you can. that's all you need. And I passed it, and then I went in for an interview, and they ba I basically told them who I was, what I want to do. They said, okay, you're hired. Because this was back yeah. when they needed teachers real bad about 12 years ago. Yeah. But yeah, and then I learned everything. The, the credential classes didn't really help. Very rarely. I think that that's like most jobs, it seems. Almost every job I've ever had yeah. where you, you go in and you may have had been taught how to do a job, but when you get there, you have to learn how to actually do the job yeah. in any job. That'd be the interesting. Thing, the thing is, though, like, it's so hands-off, though, because, like, on a, in a lot of other business situations, you would have your colleagues around you that you – are, are working on the same thing or you're part of a team or whatever. Mm -hmm. But with teaching, like Joey described, my situation was much like that. It's like I had zero teaching experience and then all of a sudden I'm in a classroom and I have a room full of students expecting me to teach them. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> there's no one else there with any authority. Yeah. You know, so it's all well, on you to figure it out. And it's, it can take some time, you know, <laughs> That's what I had to do, like, you know, at, at our library, I'll teach just li literacy instruction and stuff, and it's just like, hey, Paul, there's like an English 105 class, some freshman English class, I need to learn how to use databases and search for stuff. Can you do it? Uh, okay. <laughs> and it's just like, all right, um, I got to fill up an hour of <laughs> Hi. showing them stuff, you know, and, yeah. and teach to their level. I can't be talking about, you know, library lingo and think they know everything and stuff. So right. it took it took many classes to finally get like a, a routine out of the whole thing yeah. and that's another thing uh jargon is that part of every job you there's jargon that you learn right and you have to and teacher jargon is alphabet soup like my ipad example oh it's yeah like, it, acronyms up the ass name. which would be <laughs> a a u a right but no yeah it's, it's really all over the place but you know um i i'm kind of find it interesting that with a lot of private education out there today that companies don't start their own universities like kind of as an entryway into their company or something like that it's sort of like a mixture of college and the and the apprenticeship that Kale was talking about because it seems you it would a big company would would it would benefit them to have their own university well that's some, why they send people to uh mm. they they're always sending them out for seminars, seminars yeah but before you get a yeah. job you have to go through like our school or something. I don't know. Um, how can we improve public education? I'll give you one. Uh, I think there should be more teachers, and, and this is this is how I feel it should be. And this is not going to happen because it would probably cost... Probably fewer administrators. We Probably. But here's, <laughs> the th here's the thing. I think every classroom should have two teachers, and I think one teacher should res be responsible for specifically the presentation of the lessons and one teacher should respond be responsible for the individual instruction of the students so in other yeah. words one teacher is seeing where the levels are looking at the test scores and seeing where each student needs to be and while the teacher is teaching going around and knowing what each student needs while the other teacher is looking at the class as a whole and teaching the whole class together because that's one of the problems is that I, I always don't have enough time for one or the other yeah. if I take time to individually work with the kids at the level they need to be at I'm neglecting the entire class and I have to find some independent stuff for them to do which they're not always ready for and on the other hand when I work mm -hmm. with the whole class it's hard to get to the kids individually it's like every every class should have a TA yeah well I was going to say that it's a TA, you need more... But yeah, um, you need more than a TA. You need another teacher who is at a teacher level, who understands what it means, who can either teach... And maybe you could switch off, but you've got one teacher who can who can focus on more of the, the lesson, and one teacher who is focusing more on the data, the minutia of the kids yeah. and where they need to be. Like, can well, you, you're um, saying like a tutor. So basically you need a teacher and a tutor. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Not really a tutor, because what I'm saying tutor? is these are both responsibilities yeah. of a teacher that you have to have at that level. And I guess you could mm -hmm. call it a tutor, but at a teacher level. Right, right. A because, teacher, a tutor that's a teacher level. Right. B basically is taking care of the minutia of the, of the students, their levels and where they need to be, while the other teacher is taking care of the level of the class. Let me ask you something about that, though. Wouldn't, 
having two teachers, like one doing the individualized stuff and the other one doing like a maybe say a broader lesson, uh, wouldn't they conflict with each other? Because like say you're the teacher giving the lesson to the entire classroom, there might be this other instructor that's uh, sitting down with a particular student to give them a hands-on lesson. Wouldn't you be, like, kind of talking over one another? Uh, well, bit? no. Uh, well, first of all, uh, you would lesson plan together. So you guys would know what each person is doing, and you would connect everything together. I have myself and my two TAs. I always – that's kind of what I do with my TAs is they take two smaller groups aside. So – Yes and no. I mean, you've got to watch the level you're at, but usually you can you can make a part of the classroom where you're working with a group which isn't bothered by the other teacher. Um, I think that that's one of the things I like about the project-based approach mm -hmm. is that I think that if you can divide your time between those two areas, even though you're just the one teacher. Right. And so I'm not. I I like your idea. Well, my idea is not going to happen. About having the two so. teachers, but I don't know if it's necessarily. Yeah, it'd be a lot of money. It's you know, it's not going to happen. I understand. Yeah. I understand how hard it is to do it solo, but I did find that there were opportunities to do things like that where I could teach, um, like give a lecture on something as a group. Then when they're doing their activity, that's when I can move around and help individuals who. Yeah, the were the difficulty is when you're you know? when you're teaching at elementary school level, kids yeah. and especially kids. Do you have a TV on in there or something? No. Because we keep oh. getting... I think it's some of our feedback, actually. It's feedback? So. Our feedback? Oh. Okay. Is it me? I can leave. All right. Mm -hmm. no. I don't have a TV on. No, we're hearing some of our feedback, I think, from your... Oh. Your... It's going... It's probably coming through the, the feed, though, I think. Oh. Uh, uh, hmm. No, but the, <laughs> thank you, Paul. Uh, what, no, what I was saying is that at, at an elementary school level, kids, uh, especially the kids that I work with, don't have the ability to work independently, and so it's very, 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 <laughs> very, 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 very. <laughs> You're right. It is us. <laughs> difficult. All right. To very difficult to uh, get them to work on their own because they they keep coming back up to you or they don't right. know what to do. They don't understand. Okay. So that's something you got to teach. Yeah. Like they have to be far enough along that they can at least sit down and give it a, the so-called old college try. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm after, not sure you yeah. could do this at at a elementary level, but one of the things that uh, that the guy who started Khan Academy is suggesting is, is that where Khan! you have one guy Khan! <laughs> where <laughs> Khan! Academy yeah. <laughs> Every time you say it, you have to say it like that. Hey, did you go to God Academy yesterday? Because I got to say, there's this great class on God Academy. <laughs> where you take one yes. student. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Who is the, it's like the, um, what would you call it? Uh, the tutor of a, a younger student or a student who is at a lower level. And they're like assigned to that person. And so that when they have problems, they go to that person instead of the yeah. teacher right. to That's get good. taught. And we all know that when you're teaching something, you learn it so much more. So much more. That's one of the things. Than if they, you're uh, before you start teaching somebody. Once you start teaching the subject, you know a lot more yeah. about it. Yeah. So you oh, learn yeah. yourself. Well, so I know so much about phonics now that I had no idea before. Did you know <laughs> that after the C, if there's an I or an E, it's a soft C? See, I never knew that. Really? I like a, I like so a like I won't know the exact numbers here, but during uh, teacher, you know, education stuff, they were talking about that exact thing. They said that um, as far as retention rates, if you retest students after they, uh, you know, are taught something, yeah, they retain something like twenty percent of lecture material. 40% right. of yeah, videos. Right. I've heard that, and yeah. 80% yeah. when of, they teach when they other teach students. Other students. Yeah. So the thing is, yeah, getting them involved in teaching one another not only takes load off the teachers, it it's <laughs> much more positive reinforcement for the student. Yeah, and uh, it's... it's the, you know They'll what? learn by doing. You know what? There, there's a, there's yeah. going to... Actually, right now is the time when education has the ability, because of technology, which we're going to get to later, to make some huge changes. And they have to be big changes because the way we're doing things now is not going to continue to work. However, there is going to be so much staunch resistance to any sort of drastic change in education. Nothing will come about for many, many years. Yeah. The idea of leaving the classroom 
or the uh, of the traditional idea of having a teacher teaching a class, which I don't think is the way it should be anymore, and it should start to change now. It's not going to change now because everyone's going to be like, no, that's crazy. No one's going to do Why do you keep mocking me, Joe? <laughs> Ralph. I mean, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> because I can. Uh, oh, that, that's, that's a good, a good answer. answer. It would be answer. like trying to suggest, like, I don't know, a different thing besides Your marriage. teacher handle yeah. it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and it, well, no, I don't think it's that. But, but that, I think it's one of those things, though, where it's gonna, where it's gonna be a really hard to change, even though the technology and the tools are gonna be there. Um, let's. You okay? Let me ask you guys this. Well, I, I kind of want to go on to my uh, thing with what's going on in my school. Maybe I'll save that to the end. And why don't we go to the education of tomorrow now? Because that's kind of where the conversation is going. Okay. Wait, the education of tomorrow now, or. The education of yesterday. The education of tomorrow, today. <laughs> How about the education of tomorrow land? There we go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was. That was. That was uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Well, you know. The education the of education, tomorrow land, today. Woo. The education of tomorrow, just, just real quick about uh, it going to technology and stuff. The hard thing is that not everybody has a computer at home. So, where yeah. some areas you will, it's going to be a very slow transition. Uh, you know because what? some areas they're going to be able to. I, I, I'm kind of saying I think that, that that's not going to be a problem soon. I really think that in the next ten years it's going to get to the point where everybody will yeah, have because a computer tablets or are access coming to down computers. So fast. Yeah, I think I think now it's an issue, but I think by the time that we could make the change, I think they, everyone will have a, a computer, but it won't be a computer anymore. You'll have a you'll have access to the internet in your home through something. Yeah. You don't need a computer. It'll be a tablet. It'll be a TV. Whatever. And the I still think the government's is... going to have to subsidize and give out like government. Oh yeah, they probably will. Computers they have to out because. Well, look at things like Chromebooks. I mean, at least that's like an inexpensive computer. It's just a browser, but it it gives you a lot of good capabilities. Especially as you know, the more things become web enabled, you know, you can do a lot with HTML5 now. I think you're, instead of installing yeah. so many apps, you're going to well, have a lot more online things. And that's and it's in it's getting for to be the inexpensive, ki- you know. For the kids too, it's like there's this, there'll be a digital divide uh, between the parents that don't understand technology. So if you give them a Chromebook and you have your third grader to go home, it's like okay, I have to go on my class tonight. And the parents are like, I do not understand what this is. <laughs> I like how you did a very non uh, or very hard to pick accent there. That was very PC. Thank you. <laughs> I do not understand what this is. I do not, I do not know this accent. It's just from a country somewhere. Yes. Uh, I think the, yeah, I think racist. I think the fu- <laughs> <laughs> I think the future of technology though is really going to change everything. So let's see how is it already changing. I mean, kid, I, I can tell you from uh, one thing that that's a big change since I've been teacher is computers have become less of a uh, tool to keep kids busy and more of a tool for kids to use to learn and more automatic. I can put a kid, it has to be a certain website or a certain program, and I can put them on it and know they're going to learn while they're on it. I don't have to worry that it's just going to be some stupid game, and they're going to enjoy it. When before, I would always have to watch, like, oh, what, what, what they're going to start playing a game or, or something trail. like that. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, Oregon Trail. Exactly. And so now the thing is I've noticed that with technology, that's another thing. The other part of technology that has helped me tremendously, and it, so. unless you're a teacher, you may not know this, <laughs> but a projector with camera. That is huge for me. That has been the biggest help to my teaching is being able to project. The Elmo? Uh, Elmo. The Elmo, exactly. Yeah. Being able to project on the, the whiteboard. And the lingo. Nice, <laughs> nice. But being able to project on the whiteboard what's on my desk. I mean, that is just an, an, I, I, and be able to hook up to a computer so I can project it on the whiteboard. That has been a huge boon to my teaching. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I I've seen Linda using it, and it's it's so much easier and uh, and also because then you and it'll probably be more in the future. Thank where you. Paul just put on a clown hair. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. And now he's pretending to look okay. like Heather's behind him. Oh wait, that is Heather. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to have to do that. But yeah, no, that's that, and that is a great technology. It's helped out tremendously, and being able to get right on the internet. I mean, oh, and that's another part is access to the internet. I don't have to keep worksheets anymore. I can go on MathWorksheet.com. If Heather doesn't know about it, awesome site, MathWorksheet.com, and I can put in what I want and uh, the type of problems, and it'll give me a worksheet based on that type of math. Yeah. So it's it's stuff like that. I can look up lesson plans from other teachers. It's it's the internet has just become a huge, huge 
advantage to being a teacher. If only there was another person here who was a teacher who could say that that was true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, you know, education, the, the technology and on, <sighs> online is um, helped me out because my whole master's in library science was online. I never met somebody. I never saw someone face to face. It was completely online and allowed me to go to school yeah. through Cal State San Jose and not have to drive and go pay UCLA prices because there's only a few actual library schools around here. Um, and we we wrote in forums. We talked like this online. We had interactions with the <laughs> professors through Skype or whatever. Talk so it's really changed the game on on yes and then. And then Starbuck and Apollo were in their Viper. <laughs> Whoa! And then Daggett was running around. Well, no, and, and I got my credential <laughs> online, too. But I have to say this. There is a difference, though, because uh, there is something you miss out on right now with the technology as it is, or was when I got mine, when you do stuff online. It's a lot. There's something missing. I don't know. What do you guys Oh, the say? interaction. The interaction. Yeah. There is. Yeah. There's a total... You, and you have to be really, really organized mm -hmm. because yeah. it's very easy to get behind when it's online. When it's like, okay, uh, this week from, you know, let's say the week goes Sunday to Saturday, you're going to read three chapters, post a, a, a yeah. forum, and then reply to two of them. Well, if you're not on it, I mean, you're the only people... It's, it's not like you're in class where you're, you're learning things and, like, you're reading in class or whatever, but it, it's it could be Thursday night and... You remember everything you're do. So it's a lot of um, self motivation when it comes to online learning. Yes. I silent out, didn't I? It was <laughs> hilarious. You gotta, you gotta listen to this, man. It's, it's pretty funny. I could tell because you guys freeze. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, there's a new, uh, uh, it's called reverse teaching. This new thing that's, that's come out. And I haven't looked into it too much, but basically, the way it works is that the teacher records his lecture and the student takes the lecture home for homework. And at home, it's supposed to watch the lecture. Ooh. Then the next day, they do all the work. It's not the homework, and they mm. do the project. And so the teacher's actually working with the students to apply what they've learned. So huh. it's kind of weird. It's that they're doing the homework is to do the lesson, and then the, the school time is the actual uh, activity, which I think is brilliant, actually. Mm -hmm. Wait, I said actual a lot. That's actually, the thing actually, about yes. internet education that makes sense too is that it seems like there's a lot of just human effort put forward to conducting lectures in front of big symposiums. Like that, this is more like university yeah. level. But I mean, you know how you talked about it, it seems like there's something missing when you're online. But I mean, there's something missing if you're giving a lecture to a thousand students in a giant hall, right? So well, why yeah. not why not record the best lecturer yeah. that's giving the best lectures? And let everyone watch that recording. Well, that's, that's kind of what they did yeah. at MIT, right? Yeah. yeah, well, and that's just it. What's, yeah. I think what's going to happen is, at some point, as the inter gets, internet gets more organized, you're going to start to see that people are going to find the best lectures on the best topics, right. and yeah. those are going to be the ones that are going to be used to be shown. And it, it's, I think that's going to start to take over the basic part of teaching. But I think there's always going to need to be some sort of interactive something. Yeah. But with, definitely. with uh, like, we're, you know, we're talking with Paul now, and besides the siloing out, we're interacting with him pretty well. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the fact is, in another 20 years, I mean, the virtual reality or whatever, it might be as, as much as you need. And so that's all you need to do when you need to have the interaction. You may not need to be in the same room with somebody Distance. to be in the same room with somebody. Oh, you you won't. I did. that's definitely true. I think you won't you won't need to actually every time you want to meet somebody, it's going to be well. We'll just pop into a virtual reality room and uh, and have and our meeting. That's going to be the change. I think that needs to happen to education is it's going to happen at home. Uh, you're going to get online. You're going to interact at certain times. There's going to be lectures you need to do, and there's going to be this whole. Uh, almost education that's planned around you and you go with the groups you need to go to through the internet and I think there's mm. going to be a big push against that though and I think that's going to be yeah. the problem my kid's going to be born in a couple months and that's the revolution that my kid's going to be going through and as a teacher I know that a lot of what, what's going to happen is you know my kid's going to go to public school probably if we can get in private school that's great because you know we're in Los Angeles and eh, I teach here and even though we're not in the Los Angeles Unified School District you know I I well, there's problems with private schools, too, which we'll discuss in a little bit. But if I could homeschool my kid, I totally would do that. 
If there was some way to homeschool my kid and let them get interaction as well, I would love to be their teacher. I think that would be awesome. You should talk to Dan uh, Marino. Yeah, he actually homeschools his daughters. Really interesting. I yep. see. I'm worried about the social but interaction yeah, too part. Bad, uh, too bad Booger's not on because uh, Anissa homeschools. Oh their really? Kids. Ah, interesting. I need to talk to them about that because I, I don't know if it's something I want to do because I think interaction is very important. Yeah. But yeah. Well, by the way, another thing I think needs to change is the amount of time for school. And I, I know every, I, I'm, I shouldn't be saying this because I'm a teacher, but there should be no summer break. There really should That's not. That's one of the things that Solomon to, yeah. says, too. Go to year-round. We should be yeah. year Not year-round like no. they had it, where you're getting all this time off. Year-round, where you're yeah. getting, right now the school year is 180 or so days. It should be about 200 and something days, 220 or something. Right. And the school day should probably go until 5. I would have hated that. I know. I would have hated all it, too. All kids would, but. But it's what it should would, be yeah, happening. It, it is. really is. I mean, if I had that extra time to teach these kids. I, I, I would have geniuses coming out of my class. And the fact is, as teachers, it is tough. You ask teachers, you say, uh, oh, you guys get to get off at 2.30 or whatever. Well, yeah, but we don't get off at 2.30 because there's no, so much that's when the class ends. That's when the class ends. Right. But, yeah. but, you know, if we had more time and, and the kids were there longer, it it's almost sounds like it wouldn't work, but it would work. If I had the kids in the class more... I could have more time to teach them, to be independent, to work on their own, and to take the time I needed to do other things. And they wouldn't have the summer to forget everything you just yeah, taught and them. Yeah, and that's just... <laughs> and that's very that, true. That's so archaic. I mean, why are you off for the summer? Well, because we got to take care of the crops and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what? Is that, why, is that what it was for? That's what yeah, it's for. It it's still around. For, yeah. yep. And as much as I love having and time off... Saving us time. Yeah, and, Until and Heather starts growing some in the garden, then. <laughs> as much as I love yeah. having time off, my best time. Hey, I gotta tell you, when we were year round school, I would have two months on, two months off, four months on, two months off, four months. I love that. Oh my gosh, four months of vacation a year in increments of two. But I hated it as a teacher because I would come back after those two months, and the kids were just like, "I don't know what is my name." Yeah. <laughs> okay, not that bad. <laughs> But I, th be, I think be careful there because you you have the special ed yeah. class. <laughs> I was, I yeah. To our special ed use, uh, listeners, sorry about that. Yeah, and, and I was not wow. doing that. I was doing a dee -dee -dee, yeah, right. Which if you talk right. to Carlos Mancini, see, it just means someone who's dee -dee -dee. Dee -dee -dee. Right, right. Doesn't mean anything else. <laughs> it's are, it's dee -dee -dee. Brain farts. Uh, yeah. Uh, so what do you? So this goes on to the the next question. Will public will education ever leave the classroom? And I think that it will eventually. I think classroom will become as archaic as summer vacation is, but people will be afraid to let go of it. Yeah. I, oh, well, it's gonna maybe, take. It's gonna take a lot of time. Maybe, you know, like math or uh, English, whatever the three main subjects. The three, what they used to call the three R's. Maybe that will be the home school portion of it, online. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, online with the with all of those resources. But then they actually go to school, and then using those things, mm. the teacher teaches. That, that has some sense to it, right there. If you yeah. you could do the the basics, and you don't get to go to school. Right. Until you've passed this basic, you can read this much, you can write this much, you can do this much math, right. and then you can come to our school of application where you will apply it in projects that are mm. worthwhile. Yeah, that, like that's was good. Saying, oh, yeah. A project. Yeah, I like that. In our PC world, it's it's that won't happen. Our prime minister it, world. <laughs> that's PM. PC. PC. That's Pre PM. PM. PC. What about a BM? Or is that a PM? Are we in an hour? We're in an hour and four minutes. Oh, All right. Okay, well, let's. I want to. We will call this segment PM Dawn. Uh, I want. <laughs> I want to I want to go into boot. what's been going on at my school just real quick and get your guys' opinion on it and just take a look at it because I, I think it has a lot to do with the problem between public and private uh, schools and how they're uh, how they're uh, butting heads right now. So just uh, briefly, I work at a school in Watts called Wigan Avenue Elementary. We are a public school with Los Angeles Unified School District. There is a group of private citizens which has created a nonprofit. I say that in quotes called Parent Revolution. And Parent Revolution is going around and trying to use what's called the Trigger Law, which is a law that is uh, designed, was designed by them, to try and let parents have more control of the schools. So, what's <laughs> happened in my school is, uh, Parent Revolution got together with some uh, parents who had a grudge against the principal, 
and they were able to use some not so uh, nice tactics to go around and get just barely 50% of the school to oust the principal who was doing an awesome job, but some parents were not. <laughs> Stop laughing at my principal! Oh. oh, you're laughing at Daryl having getting uh, crotched by crotched by a cyclops. Crotchy, crotchy, So oh, all crock you. <laughs> so all of the teachers decided to leave Wiegand with the principal. So it's been kind of this big thing that's been going on. And here's the question: Revolution. Revolu well, it's yes. the parent revolution was the they came in and caused this. It sounds like it was un, uh, it was a good idea originally, but here's how I see it. I think UTLA, which is our union, and many of the school unions have become far too powerful. They have protected the teachers far too much, and because of yep. it, the teachers have become complacent and not the best teachers out there. I think this is a backlash saying, you know, well, if the, the public institutions can't teach our kids because LA, LA schools are horrible, um, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and the parents are going to take over. But the parents don't know any better either, and that's the big problem, is you get a case like ours, which is a, is a perfect way to show how this doesn't work. The parents come in, that the few parents who have a grudge, and they don't do it based on education. They do it based on they don't like the principal for non-educational reasons. So now, how much power should the parent have over a public school, over their public school? I've talked to people who are in private schools who say, because the parents pay, they have a lot of power, but all we need to do is a dog and pony show. We don't really have to teach their kids that much because they're probably going to learn anyway because they're in a private school. But when the parents come down, we got to make it look like they like it. And whatever they say, we have to do because they're kind of our boss because they're paying. In a public school, the parents are also kind of the boss, but they're not the only boss because the public school belongs to everybody. So, you know, when you look at a public education and a private education, you know, uh, I don't know. How much power should parents have? Because hmm. that's a big problem with our school. Mm -hmm. So a few parents who don't know anything about education came and really messed up it, messed it up for the community. This is going to be a bad year for the school next year because it's all new teachers. It's it's uh, it's a new principal and it's a tough place to teach. And they're they they lost a lot. Well, I would say I I agree with you about uh, teacher unions. They definitely are interested in job security for instructors, making things good for the instructors. They're yeah, seldom much so. involved in doing things that are going to enhance things for the students or make education better. Even though they use way. that as their line. Right. But um, if the unions can't uh, create better education, who's going to? Well, and that's the thing is, is the, uh, the problem is, is that um, it shouldn't be up to the unions as much, but I think the unions is part of the problem. The thing is, is that the the teachers are the ones who know best a lot of times. But when teachers get complacent, they don't do very good. Like like any human being, you give them enough protection, you give them enough. You know, I mean, we get protections. Nobody eh, think of any job. You can't. You can't get fired. I can't. I can't. You, get got, you, you can molest a kid and you won't get fired. Exactly. I can do pretty much anything. In I got the before. same thing in the state. Do I could have... just. I could tell somebody off, and they can't let me go. Yeah. And do, well, do you have like a case where there was a molestation that happened and there weren't, there wasn't a firing? Over yeah, the whole there? Miramonte thing. Yeah. They, yeah. Was he wasn't really, fired. You go to the uh, you go to the that room that was, uh, was he found that he, building. No, yeah. and that's the problem. That's part was of the problem because there's a lot of protection. Right. Right. And there and the protection is there for a reason but it's gone overboard because you don't want, you know, to get in trouble and then you yeah. didn't do anything. But that usually doesn't happen. I'm not very familiar and with the And it doesn't Miramonte happen thing. because I mean, they're he, protected. Are we pretty much saying that even though he wasn't legally found guilty, he more than likely was? Well, and that's and that was part of the problem was the the pro, was the Miramonte thing was it was it was he was doing things that he shouldn't be doing with kids and he was doing some illegal things as well. But when it came to, down to it, they couldn't fire him until the whole thing was was till it happened. So what they ended up doing was they paid him to leave. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so and that's what happens a lot of times is and where a lot of the school the money go money the school goes even if because they're going to say they're innocent obviously no matter what they do and so they and because of their contract they can't get let go. It's yeah. like Michael Jackson. It's just it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But and it's just one of those things where. I mean, oh my God. and it makes teachers more scared. Teachers are so, in LAC, are so afraid of being judged. It's like, oh, don't come in and watch me do my job. Oh, it's a, the union, I don't want, stop it, Joe. Uh, Ralph, 
the you I don't want the union coming in here. I mean, I the union says, "Oh, you don't have to be watched cuz we know it makes you nervous and yeah. it hurt, it hurts the your, your teaching and everything." And, and the fact is is think of a job where you're not allowed to be watched by your boss. I mean, and the right. boss can't make yeah. decisions about you. But well, I you, think there needs to be give more power to the principal too yeah. to take care of their school and to decide who's going to teach there. And that that's a problem yeah. too is where the you know, you go into the private sector into a, a company or something, you have your manager, the supervisor. Yeah. If a sport is they're not doing too well, fire them. Yeah. You find somebody else who can do it. And the then, principal can't do that. The yeah, principal cannot do that, no. Yeah, well, it, this whole thing is actually, you know, the whole union thing is a whole nother podcast. But uh, the problem is, is that unions initially always are good. And yeah. when they gain too much power, then yeah. they're bad. Mm. It's a cycle. And what, where we're in right now is many, most people's jobs are being abused. People are being abused in their jobs because they don't have unions to protect them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a balance, a moderation there. And right. a lot of times there's not. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I think I think we can pretty much wrap this up. I think that's a good point. The, the whole union thing, and that's a topic for another time. All right, let's uh, let's close this up. Public education, yay or nay? No, wait, no, that's <laughs> no, no, that's not <laughs> nay. <laughs> Boo! No, it, it we need it. And, we do, um, and it's it has a good its place, thing. and of course, it needs to be improved. But it's it's getting the politics out of it and getting the teachers back into it. Oh, good good ending. Let's stop there. Yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, no, Daryl, you're next week. Well, what, what's our topic? <laughs> He, he's right about dude. Politics. He had a good ending line. Don't mess it up. I'm, not mess I'm adding to it. Uh, <laughs> if it but, sucks, I'm gonna laugh at you. <laughs> I mean, he's right about politics because our system of politics is designed to be slow moving and deliberate, and so is the educational system. I and guess God, you, you yeah. drew the lines there, Paul. I like that. Yeah, yeah, very nice. There you All go. Right. All right. So next nice. week, yes. I did them. Oh, I want to add to that. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Just kidding. Cool. Next yeah. week, Daryl, you're the. It's your choice. What are we gonna do? We're going to do logical fallacies. Logical fallacies? Can you explain yeah. that for me? I mean, for our audience. That would be all of the... For uh, us public educated users, what yeah. the hell did you just say? <laughs> okay, well, it's it's tied a lot to skepticism because... Um, well, actually, it's not directly tied, but it's good to know if you want to be um, rational and logical in your arguments. First of all, it's really good to know the logical fallacies so that you don't use them yourself. And also so you can identify them when someone who's arguing with you is using them against you. And just a couple of examples that are pretty common. The ad hominem attack. Like, oh, I don't, yeah, like, I don't like what you're saying. Yeah. You're stupid, right? Right. That's your argument. <laughs> so that's oh. a logical fallacy. You're not making a logical argument. Oh, yeah. You're just attacking. Yeah, it's just like talking to women. I think you spoke whoa. out loud there, Paul. Oh, you are <laughs> so, <laughs> Paul, Paul, you are so right. Watch the emails. Oh, I know, whoa. Watch the so, emails um, roll. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Paul, you just made an ad hominem against 50% of the human race. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yes. um, is this enough to fill a podcast? Oh, though? definitely. Because it there is, are lots but of them. He's going to have to make sure there's a good list, right, checklist right, I'll, I'll to go with. I'll give everyone a list. Yeah, we need oh, some homework. Give us a list. Give here's it to us. Here's just to you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. whet your appetite. Oh, thing. yeah. Straw here's man. another oh. yeah, straw man <laughs> argument. Exactly. It's basically <laughs> constructing an argument that the opposition oh, never yeah. made yes. and knocking it over because it's an easy target. Oh, I like the straw man. So, here's a straw man that's Oh, yeah, give it to me. It's like. Well, we don't want gay marriage because oh, we don't we do. let people marry animals. Oh, that's good too. But no one on the opposite side is saying people should marry animals. Oh, oh zoophilia. Yeah. yeah. So that's a straw man argument. It's easy to knock down because it's a ridiculous argument, but the other side never made the argument. All right. So. so it gets knocked down? Yeah. Like an animal. And it does it get up again? <laughs> problem I is. get knocked down, but I get, I get up, up again. again. Get up again. Okay, you were get supposed to sing the next line, not start over. Oh, I get, right. get knocked down. I, well, I don't know the next line. That's a do you problem. you have enough to keep me down? <laughs> I thought it was you're never going to keep me down. No, do you have enough to keep me down? Oh! It's a, it's a drinking song. Oh! This is Joey Shamble. Thanks for joining us this week. <laughs> I have a lager drink. Uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway. It's a lot of drinks. <laughs> a uh, lot of drinks. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for making it through uh, today's podcast. Uh, so you can please DJ, email us. Drop a beat. Oh, we are now being...
We are now being. Oh no. Uh, this is Joey Shamble. Uh, you can find me at. Uh, Who likes hip hop? I am rambling.com. I'm Kale Anderson. You can find me at Rom's Rants at blogspot.com. I'm Daryl George. You can find me at George.com, G I O R S. This is Paul Hottinger. You can reach me at heyitspaul.com. With a squeaky door. Hey, and keep an eye open for our upcoming yeah. treasure hunt to Nevada. No. Uh, New, Mexico. New Mexico. New Mexico. South Dakota. South Dakota. <laughs> South Dakota. <laughs> We're going to bring a map. <laughs> bring a map. <laughs> and, and an axe. Awesome. And a nap. <laughs> and an axe. An axe. An axe. Hide bring, the axe. Bring your ass. <laughs> and your axe. Okay, see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Music. Bye. 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 No, oh, no. no. Fire no. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish. That's my name. I'm smart, I'm strong, and clinically insane. That's right. I'm coming after you, Bruce Wayne, because I'm Bane. It's a shame. <laughs> you Bane, you suck! <laughs> you suck, suck Bane! <laughs> Stop the music. Kill them all. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you Bane, you suck! The, the part I love the most, though, is... Who likes hip-hop? <laughs> 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 Okay, we've been rolling, actually. Oh, uh, we're rolling! Oh, oh, Jesus. Welcome oh, to my ass! What?